All right, well, how do you change a spark plug on a small engine? For that matter, any engine, they're all pretty much the same. The only question is access and how many spark plugs your engine has, how many cylinders, usually one per cylinder, sometimes two, it's a Hemi. And, uh, you know, how do you, where are they located? And of course, like I said, access is a big thing, but like this one is a V. It's got a cylinder here and a cylinder here. I already replaced the spark plug on that side and you can see the high tension line going right in here to the spark plug. So you gotta find that first and you just need to pop it off. Be very delicate, don't uh, jerk on it, don't pull on the cord, just like any kind of cord coming out of the wall, pull on the actual item itself here. And these are all different designs and stuff. Some, some, some are hard, some are easy, but they're all basically the same. You take it off, see it pops off. It's got like a, a snap or a tension in there to hold it on. Then you find out what size socket fits. Okay, in this case it's a 7 16th, or sorry, 13 sixteenths uh, deep socket. It's got to be deep. If it's not deep, you'll crack the top of the spark plug off. You should have an insert in there to also prevent cracking it off and cracking it in half. And I, of course, I don't have one in there, but I'm just going to be gentle. And remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So pull with this a little bit until you get it. So you, okay, so it ratchets, and you're going to go counterclockwise. It should, you just have to break, break. I already broke it. It's easy break the seal after the first time, which is this is the first time, sometimes the first one's the hardest one to remove. And then you can get the rest by hand, or if you can't get it by hand, take the ratchet off. Just take the extension, this is a little trick I use, and just spin it by hand here. This will get it. And now the key is to make sure that you have the right exact spark plug to replace it with. If you don't have that, you're in trouble. So I got it most of the way out with that. Let's get the rest of the way by hand. Usually you want to wear gloves too. Oh, look at all that rust on this thing. All right, this is an NGK. If I want to do the original one, you can always cross-reference it, look it online. NGK BPR4ES. Yeah, B BPR4ES. And let's take a look at the electrode. You'll see what the new one looks like. This one's all fouled up. This looks normal. You can really tell what's going on inside the engine. And this gap makes a big difference too. You're supposed to measure them, although I don't really do that. They usually come pre-gapped where they're close and what happens is over time the gap gets larger and when they're new the gap is smaller or exactly right so I'll usually tap tap it down when it's new so the gap's a little bit smaller than normal and then it performs well over time but uh, you can make an exact science, science out of this and check them all the time clean them but nobody does that anymore they people used to do that but the ignition systems are so much better these days you don't have to do that and like I said I'll just use it uh, I mean this is from 2013 when the engine was brand new it's 2019 now six years old Never been changed. All right, but here is the replacement spark plug. Same numbers as you can see, and it should be shiny clean. And you can, like I said, you can tell a lot about what's going on inside the engine. And it's got a cover, see right there? It's a cardboard cover. By looking at the spark plug, now this is what it's supposed to look like when it's new. You see, nice and shiny. Now, taking the first one out is no problem, but you wanna make sure you put some anti-seize compound on these threads. And I'm going to do that right now before I put it in. I'm going to spin it in and out a couple times so I make sure it coats all the threads so that this doesn't become weld that are fused to the engine block over time. Oh, but first I want to just tap this down, like I said. My non-scientific method. I'm not hitting it hard. Just enough so that the gap is maybe a little bit more narrow than comes from the factory. All right, that's good, we're ready to go. Then we get the anti-seize compound on there. All right, you can see anti-seize compound. It's actually the opposite of what I use for, for drain plugs. I use something like a form of gasket on the drain plugs so they don't leak and I don't have to make them super tight. But this, just anti-seize, is what you want for spark plugs. So you want a little bit of a bead. Oops, there we go. Right around. Not. Don't get it on the firing surface, but right around the perimeter and then you thread it in. All right, here you can see I've got it right around the perimeter. You don't want to get it in the engine, remember, at all. This is just to help you so that the spark plug doesn't get welded to the engine block. You can see in there where we're going. Pretty clear shot and I've got the nice bright sun. Let's see if you can, there you go. See exactly what we're doing in there. All right, all right let's get that. Can you see? Uh, there, okay. 
So get it in there. You want, always want to do this by hand. Do not try to use a power tool to start it off. If you cross thread, you're in big trouble. There are kits to fix that, but you never, that's like a worst nightmare on this job. There's not really that much that can go wrong unless you break the spark plug off, like I was mentioning, or you cross thread it. Those are the two uh, dangers here. So that's one time I'm pulling it out now. One, it's distributing this, this uh, anti-seize in there. You want it, you want all those threads coated so it doesn't, like I said, doesn't weld itself in there. This is number two. And after two, we'll pull it out. Well, it's, I didn't go all the way the first time. Whoa. And it becomes easier too. At first, it's it's kind of difficult to turn it. This stuff also makes it easier to, to turn in these threads because they're they're totally dried out. There's nothing that's been making it easy on these threads. Let's take a look one last time what it looks like, and then we're going to spin it in for the final time, which I'm not going to record the whole thing. But see, air. Look how evenly distributed that is. That's what you want. And then we'll do we'll turn it in that final time, and then we'll we'll torque it tight. Wait, I got something on the. Do I have something on the tip of that? Yeah, I do. See that? I gotta I gotta get this stuff off of there. I need to wipe that off. Okay, I wiped it off and then blow on it. You don't want any kind of debris or dust in your engine cylinders. It's a good thing about doing it yourself. You know that that stuff's not going to happen, right? Put it back in. I'm just going to tighten this by hand. And we are already all the way. Yeah, we already are. It's very easy now. Those threads turn very easy. Get this on. Make it so it goes clockwise. Now you want to get this just right. You don't want it too loose, obviously, but you don't want it too tight and you will strip the threads out. You will destroy your engine block and everything in the setup if you do it too tight. So you got to kind of get a feel for this. I'm not using a torque wrench. This one went in really nice. You see, and it's it, there. It is. That's that's it. I think. Last step. You just pop this thing on. Uh, you can see inside there. What's in? What is inside of that? All right. All right. Get a good view. Yeah. You can see there. It's just gonna clamp right onto the end of that spark plug and, and hold itself there, nice and snug. And you'll, you'll hear it snap into place. I think. Let's see. That's my knee. That's my knee cracking. Forget that. Let's see if I can get this in here without blocking the light. See, I, I block the light every time I'm down there. That's it. All right, perfect. And we got both of them done. Let's uh, turn it on. Okay, all your small engines are similar, even your automobiles. So that's it. If you guys have any other tips that I don't that I didn't mention here, be sure to write them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.